Hello, uh, my name is Sesh Nadatha. I'm a postdoc at the ICG, the University of Portsmouth. Uh, and in this talk, I'm going to be talking about uh, cosmology using uh, voids in EBOS. Right, uh, this talk is part of a series of uh, related EBOS talks at this conference, including uh, the talk by Eva and Julian on uh, the overview of EBOS and the main cosmological results. And then we have a talk by Mariana on uh, Baron acoustic oscillations, Hector on relative space distortions, Gongbo talking about the multi tracer approach, and then this talk, which covers the void galaxy correlation analysis from the luminous red galaxy sample that's between redshifts of 0.6 and 1. Uh, and I'll also briefly mention uh, some earlier results from a very similar analysis that uh, we performed on BOSS data from a previous data release. Uh, and I'll mention in passing, though I won't go into any details, uh, a related uh, EBOS void paper uh, by Obert et al, uh, which you should also look up. Okay, let's start off by considering how we get cosmological information from galaxy surveys in general. Now, a standard procedure, as I'm sure everybody's aware, is that we make a very big 3D map of galaxy and quasar positions, and convert that map into uh, two-point clustering statistics, uh, and then analyze those statistics using uh, theoretical models. Now, what information do we get from this? This is covered in quite a few of the other talks. Uh, we can measure a combination of uh, distance, that's the transverse co-moving distance to rate of Z, which is denoted dm of Z, uh, and the expansion rate of the universe uh, at that redshift, so the Hubble rate h of Z. Uh, and that information, geometrical information, comes primarily from the BAO feature, uh, but we can also use the full shape of the galaxy power spectrum or the two-point correlation function. Uh, and by modeling that, we can extract the growth rate of structure, F sigma eight, and a little bit of additional information on the geometry. Uh, so for an RSD overview, see Hector's talk. But how can we go beyond this and get more information? Well, the first obvious op option is that we just collect a lot more data. Uh, and this means building a bigger telescope, surveying for longer, uh, better spectrographs, etc. Uh, in practical terms, we're going to get this very soon from DESI, uh, which will have a much larger volume of data than we have from EBOS. But in the meantime, we could also uh, work at uh, a better modeling of the data that we have. And one approach to do this is to improve the modeling of two-point statistics by pushing to smaller nonlinear scales. And that's the EFT approach uh, described in a couple of other talks uh, at this conference. I'm going to talk about the third approach, uh, which is essentially to measure something different using the same data. Uh, so specifically, in this talk, I'm going to be talking about restricting ourselves to regions where linear theory works better, uh, and then only using linear theory so it's kind of complementary to the EFT approach. And we're going to do this by using uh, voids. So a very brief introduction to what voids and the void galaxy correlation are. Uh, as I'm sure everybody intuitively understands and knows, uh, voids are just regions, uh, in large regions of space, which have very few galaxies and uh, correspondingly low total matter density. And we identify these using our wonderful 3D galaxy maps using a variety of algorithms. Now, because voids have a low density and a lower density contrast, uh, they are therefore a lot closer to Zeldovich behavior, and that's very useful, as we will see. Uh, having identified these voids, um, the void galaxy correlation is then just the cross-correlation of centers of these voids, which for our purposes correspond to the position of the minimum density, uh, cross-correlated with galaxies. And that's actually, exactly equivalent to the galaxy number density as a function of position around the void. So it, it's essentially a constrained one-point function as opposed to a standard two-point function. Uh, now this is uh, completely isotropic if we were in real space and knew the exact cosmology, uh, but when observed in richer space, it's uh, mildly anisotropic. Uh, and that's just shown here. So on the left-hand side, the plot shows you a model uh, void uh, galaxy correlation in real space and then how that gets distorted as we move to the right in redshift space. Now these distortions come from 
uh, Rexus space distortion effects, as well as from the alcock baczynski effect. Uh, in order to actually perform the analysis, we use a standard uh, uh, compression of the correlation function data into Legendre multipoles. And this plot just shows you schematically uh, what the monopole and quadrupole terms of this uh, look like. Now, uh, you can understand a little bit of the physics going on here is by reference to these three zones. So zone one is right in the center of the void where you have no galaxies. If you have no galaxies, then your uh, correlation function is exactly minus one. Uh, and so you have no redshift space distortions either. Uh, and then as you move a little bit further out, uh, where you're still deep in the under density, uh, intuitively you expect a, a, uh, a stretching effect along the line of sight. And that is exactly what you see. That stretching corresponds to a negative quadrupole, and that's driven by outflow velocities from the void. And if you move even further out, uh, then you come across the region where you have large over densities in the void walls. And then uh, in this region, you see a Kaiser squashing effect that leads to a positive quadrupole. So those are the physical effects that go into this. Uh, and the, the things that cause this are uh, RSD terms and the alcock baczynski effect. Now, Hector has also covered this in his talk, but very briefly, let me mention that the RSD uh, arises because of uh, um, galaxy velocities, uh, in particular, out velocity outflows from the center of the void uh, that lead to Doppler shifts in the uh, observed redshifts. Uh, and that causes distortions in the, uh, in the measured correlation function. Those distortions are proportional to the growth rate of structure uh, parameterized as F sigma eight. Uh, then you also have the alcock baczynski effect, which is basically a distortion introduced if we convert the measured redshifts to distances using a cosmological model, uh, a reference model that differs from the, the true cosmology. And we parameterize those distances in the usual way using uh, these alpha parameters. So alpha perpendicular and alpha parallel, where we've broken uh, the, the vectors down into perpendicular and parallel to the line of sight. Now, both the RSD and alcock baczynski effects uh, give rise to this quadrupole term, but uh, their effects on the quadrupole are very distinct. So the bottom left plot shows you at a fixed uh, cosmology. Um, how changing the growth rate changes the quadrupole. And on the left-hand side, at a fixed growth rate, how if we change the ratio alpha perpendicular to alpha parallel, how that affects the quadrupole. Uh, and the thing you can see here is that uh, these two effects lead to very different changes and very different behavior in the quadrupole. So they, they are very easily distinguished, which is not uh, so true for the galaxy two-point statistics. Okay, so when we're applying this to data, um, uh, we're using the EBOS LRG sample, as I mentioned before, uh, and that's combined with the high redshift tail of uh, the earlier BOSS uh, CMAS data. Uh, and we use uh, the revolver code um, in order to identify voids in this sample. Now, a very important aspect of the revolver code is that before performing the void finding, uh, it uses an RSD removal technique uh, in order to uh, go from the redshift space galaxy data to an estimate of the real space galaxy distribution and then performs void finding on that. And this step has been shown to be very important uh, in order to remove uh, selection biases in our sample that will completely mess up the measurement. Uh, as an important uh, side effect, it also allows us to estimate the real space undistorted void galaxy correlation, which as you will see later is, is quite an important. Uh, thing to do. Uh, okay, so how do we actually model uh, the data? Uh, the model is a very simple one. It's the equivalent of uh, a Kaiser RSD model. Um, and uh, as you can see it here on the left hand side, Xi superscript S refers to the register space correlation. Uh, and that's just related to Xi superscript R, the isotropic real space correlation, uh, by a term that represents the Jacobian of the coordinate transformation. And this Jacobian depends on uh, the, the velocity term and the derivative of the velocity term. 
And in order to model that velocity, we just use linear perturbation theory, very simple, to relate that to the, the matter under density in the void. Now, actually, uh, in measuring the, uh, this in the data, we use a slightly more complicated model where we convolve this with a velocity PDF that accounts for a dispersion in the velocity with a random component along the line of sight. Uh, but the basic picture is contained in, in this equation here. OK, so we went away and uh, measured uh, the correlation in the data and performed uh, fits to it. So here's in the top panel, uh, on the left-hand side, the monopole and then the quadrupole uh, measured in the data. And the blue line in these panels shows um, the best fit model predictions. As you can see, the model is a, uh, a very good fit to the data with a good reduced chi-squared. Uh, actually, implementing the, the model fitting and uh, parameter inferences from this is a somewhat complicated process because the RSD step that I mentioned earlier requires us to, to perform reconstruction uh, and the RSD removal uh, multiple times. And the, the data vector that we get out depends on the parameter assumptions that go in. Uh, and so we have to do this sort of recursively in order to uh, have a self-consistent fitting. And this is all achieved with the vect Victor code, which is a public code that you can do for um, use for void galaxy modeling. Uh, the constraints that we get are shown on the bottom left here. Uh, and one thing that you can see uh, is that there is only a weak correlation between constraints on the growth rate F sigma 8 and the ratio of the alpha parameters. Of course, uh, we want to then test uh, the robustness of our, of our fitting method. Uh, so we test for systematic errors in much the same way as it's done for the standard uh, BAO and RSD analyses. So we use the same suite of uh, simulated synthetic catalogs that includes fast, approximate, easy mocks, as well as full end body and series mocks. And we're testing here uh, limitations of the model uh, possible effects that arise due to the combination of the CMAS and, and um, EBOS LRG data, uh, and uh, systematics that come from the choice of a fiducial cosmology model in order to analyze this data. Uh, and without going into the, too many of the details of this, the summary is that systematics are a small contribution to the total error budget, and in particular for the most important parameter, which is alpha perpendicular over alpha parallel, and systematics are at uh, lower than the 1% level. Okay, so we believe our, our measurement is, is pretty robust. Uh, now that we know that, we can go ahead and have a look at the cosmological results. And what I'm showing here is uh, the results in blue uh, is the consensus constraints that come from the BAO and uh, Galaxy full shape analyses combined and also combining the Fourier space and configuration space analysis. And then in orange is the results that we get from our void galaxy uh, analysis of the same data. Uh, and you can see that uh, firstly, we get a, a much higher precision measurement of the ratio of uh, distances, dm over dh. Uh, the parameter constraints that we get are also almost orthogonal to those from galaxy clustering. Uh, and so there's a huge amount of information that we can gain from combining these two analyses without requiring any additional data. So we pro uh, provide this uh, consensus combination result and that corresponds to these green contours in this plot. Uh, and that's also then represented in this triangle plot on this slide. Uh, and we find that by combining the void galaxy analysis with uh, the galaxy clustering, we basically get large improvements in the errors and measurement of each of the the three main parameters for, for these studies, the F sigma A, DM over RD, and DH over RD. And the total parameter volume is reduced by up to 55%. So uh, the constraints are, are just summarized over here, uh, and these are perfectly consistent with Planck Lambda CDM and very similar to previous BOSS results from, from this paper. Now, how much does this actually add to our knowledge of cosmology? And these void results are not included in the final EBOS cosmology paper, but we can uh, go back to a, a, a slightly earlier paper um, where I used only the BOSS, older BOSS void uh, analyses and older DR14 
BAO data from a multiple traces of a multiple redshifts. Uh, and then that plot here on the left-hand side, and these are constraints on dark energy in, a, uh, in an open universe. On the left-hand side, uh, BAO plus voids is the orange contour, and then the right-hand side panel is the same one that you saw in Eva's talk. Uh, and so you compare orange to blue, and you can see that just adding voids is, is equivalent to a lot of uh, information gained from DR14 to DR16. So this is going to be a method that is very useful for all future large-scale structure surveys. Thank you.